Hey, hello, everybody. This is Purge. Bring you guys a Treon gameplay. I uh, haven't played Treon in like a year. I haven't made a video in like a year. And he's been moderately changed recently, so I thought I'd pump a video out. Um, I played a... Uh, I think this is a party ranked game with Blitz and another friend of ours, Marowak. And um, we kind of dicked around moderately because our party MMR is still pretty low. It's it's actually been quite difficult to raise it up because uh, this night we played four games, right? Um, and we won a decent amount of them, but... Sometimes you don't get full MMR, and then you play one game where you don't pick a carry, and you end up losing 40. And that sucks. And that, like, it, like killed all of our momentum for the night, and, like, lost all the MMR. So our party MMR hasn't really moved very much, but we haven't been trying super hard, so it's kind of our fault. Anyways, uh, regardless, um, Treant Protector is the, game, is the hero of this game. Uh, I didn't lane him standard in any way, uh, and I didn't really play him very standard. I didn't itemize him very standard. I just kind of play to carry tree and protector kind of uh not not exactly but um god this is taking actually forever i'm just gonna eight times do the pick because the game is a little long and i uh there's a lot of parts that are pretty much just me hitting creeps but i can basically talk a lot about tree and protector and i can talk about his benefits and his negatives as well um the main benefit to the hero is that his third skill, Living Armor, can protect your allies from damage. Uh, blocks up to seven instances of 80 damage. This is magic or physical. So it's 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 a pretty strong hero. He's been actually played a lot uh, in the last TI qualifiers, at least. Um, as, a as a hard support, essentially. It always feels so loud to me. I was pretty unsure what to buy here. Uh, I, I think I was... I was expecting to play support as I joined, but then I realized that uh, we didn't really have a safe lane farm, so I think our gyrocopter wanted to go play support or something like that, so like I said, it was a weird game. So instead of buying anything, I was like, I'm just going to go to lane with two tangos. And most tiers, that's absolutely stupid, but on a hero like Trium Protector, it's actually okay in some ways. Um, going to fast boots on this hero is really beneficial to you. Uh, the reason for that is because you have a huge base damage, as you guys can see, I hit for 85, which is, I think, the highest in the game by far. I don't think any hero really comes close. 85 is my average, 81 to 89 damage. So your damage is huge, your armor is low, and your HP is really high. I have 625 base HP. Uh, one thing that I may be missing is a clarity potion, because he does have a bit of a mana problem, and your leech seed spell costs 140. So if I was to criticize anything here is that uh, I didn't buy any uh, mana regen, so that's fair to say. But uh, the main purpose of the hero... So I forgot to check my... turn my scope to D&D. The main purpose of the hero is to support, to get some levels and some farm, and then you eventually transition this uh, into a full support role. Uh, one of the problems with Treant as a hero, in my opinion, is that you don't really get that many levels, and it's pretty hard to farm because you don't have an AoE spell. So that's kind of the problem with the hero. Um, he's still really good as a support hero, and he's not picked very much right now, but there are times where he's really, really good and really annoying to play against as well. We played him sometimes on Zephyr during the TI qualifiers, and it went pretty well, uh, mostly due to player error <laughs> that it didn't go amazing. But um, with the bounty rune, I was also able to pick up a fast boots here, and this will help me out against the tide. So that was pretty nice to have. Um, I think if I do this again, though, I'd maybe get a stout shield right off the bat. I, I'm not entirely sure, though. But having a bit of mo uh, mobility advantage against the tide hunter was pretty nice to have. I think we should have pressured him a bit more. Letting him get two is a little bad. Um, his HP is a little low right now as well, so... And here I kind of felt a little bit of weakness. It's so hard. I was really well done by both of us, I think. Uh, maybe not me, I could have done that a little safer, but... Getting that kill was really good, but I lost a lot of HP for it, which is a bit of a mistake. Because remember, I came to lane with not much HP, and I didn't come to lane with much regen either, so... Um, it kind of puts me in a bad spot where I... Despite me having, like, a big gold advantage early, I can't really bully the uh, Tidehunter as a result. If I had, like, a Stout Shield with a Basilius, I would feel a lot better, because a Basilius would give me a big mana pool. Again, I, I talk about this every time I talk about Basilius, but if your int is really low early, then Basilius gives you a lot, so... Uh, and my int is definitely low early, so Basilius would have been really helpful to me, I think, in the early game. 
And something like a stout shield would have meant that I take less creep damage, which means I can trade hits with him if I want to. I did, oh, I did buy a stout shield. I'm so good. I did buy a stout shield because um, I knew that my HP was low and that the stout was going to go a long ways towards helping me lane against the the trion or the, uh, the tide hunter. He does have anchor smash now, and I have to be pretty careful about that. It does reduce damage as a percentage, so since I have a big number, it's going to take a lot of damage off. It's important to give your allies armor sometimes. Um, that one was maybe unneeded because he was very likely to get the kill anyways, but um, it does block five instances of 40 damage. It's like a super stop shield for five hits. And that'll block things like towers, it'll block creep waves, it'll block hero damage. And I'm sure it gave him like 200 HP or something like that. Uh, maybe less, but uh, probably more like... Actually, it's 200 if it's perfect. It probably gave him at least 100 extra HP, which is in the early game sometimes really beneficial. Um, the other problem with not having a Basilius here is that living armor costs a lot more mana than it did in the past. It costs 50 and the cooldown is a lot longer. So that means that um, using it whenever you want to is not as possible. You kind of need some way to get your 8 mana pool up. Um, and unfortunately, again, the way that I lane this, I just went really, really greedy on my build is that I, I just wanted to go for sitting in the lane, get last hits, and get experience. Now, normally you can't do this as a Trium Protector because, um, simply put, you're never going to get this many last hits. You're playing support, you're pulling, you're buying wards, you're zoning heroes, and most games where you play Trium, you really don't have very many items. Like, it's very rare that you get really farmed as a Trium. You're basically a support hero. I was really surprised I didn't get that last hit. Um, you're basically a support hero that doesn't have farming capabilities and generally doesn't get a lot of assists because you don't have a lot of offensive spells that do damage. Your only offensive spell that does damage is your Leech Seed, your second skill, um, with the exception of the Aghanim's ulti. Um, in addition to that, you're very rarely also right-clicking the enemy heroes. Most of the time, most of the time you're just living armoring your important heroes, you're casting a Leech Seed and you're running away, or you're ulting and you're running away. There's not a lot of opportunities for a Triumph Protector, unfortunately, to get a lot of items. So this game was kind of nice because I had a, a safe lane to farm. And because I had a safe lane to farm, that means that uh, I should be able to grab the items that I want to grab as easily as I want to grab them. Um, I wanted to make sure my HP was a bit higher. As you can see, the Thirst buff is on me. I want to make sure that that isn't on me, if possible, because number one, it gives vision. And number two, it also means that uh, the Bloodseeker gets bonus damage in his mid lane as he's last sitting. So me being low HP is actually really hurting uh, the mid lane a bit. So I kind of want to use Living Armor to keep my HP up if possible. Unfortunately, I did not get that last hit. Took a lot of damage too. At this point, the Tide was definitely outplaying me. But this was basically because I was not able to bully him. And also because Anchor Smash is so fantastic against melee heroes. So at this point, I'm sure he has way more last hits than me. Yeah, he does. So he's been catching up from his first blood. Um, again, I'm just soloing against him. And I actually feel pretty scared here. With my HP this low, if the Bloodseeker comes or something like that, I definitely will just die. So I'll just use my mana to get my HP up again. It gives you a little bit of HP regen. Uh, 10 for 15 seconds. So it's 150 HP. It's pretty good. It's like a, like a tango. But after this, my HP is going to be completely gone. But either way, getting solo experience is great. Uh, it'll allow me to get my, my ulti a ultimate a little bit earlier. And more skill points into things like Leech Seed is great. Leech Seed is actually a really good skill still. A really, I think I said that right. It's really, it's a really good skill still. Yeah, I did that correctly. Um, it does damage over time, and it also heals in an AoE around the area. So it's fantastic. 30... I like getting a second point because it's so valued because it doubles the healing and damage amount, but if you're playing to support, usually you're going to go 1-1-4 one, one, as your skill build because one level of nature's guys will sometimes allow you to initiate with overgrowth or leech seed and, and result in your team getting a kill. So generally you get late nature's guys one point. I knew he was going to anchor smash there, so I used living armor. That was really good that I did that because it blocked uh, a whole 60 damage of the anchor. And I think his anchor is probably like level 2 right now, something like that. Um, again, I'm still farming here. Uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, what I'm going to buy this game is Ag and Scepter. The reason is because Ag's just got buffed again. The way that it works um, in the past, or at least, well, it was recently added, not too long ago, maybe less than six months. But what it does is it allows you to put eyes in the force. Um, this is a really, really old Triumph Protector sub ability. Um, or it used to be one of his base abilities. It used to be a skill where you could turn a tree into like a, a you'd put an owl above it in Dota 1. And what the owl would do was, uh, well, there's a couple of ways it worked. I I'm going to tell you about the whole history because we have a lot of time to talk about this. And I think it's really interesting personally. I don't know about you guys, but um, again, if I'm not doing anything living armor, your allies, it's really important to watch the map like that so you see those opportunities. Um, one of the versions of Triant that I remember from a very long time ago was uh, 
you could create a tree that was actually your tree and it gave you vision. That was all it did, I think, if I'm not mistaken. God, was that really one skill? I feel like that was actually one of his skills. He always had a variation of overgrowth, but one of his skills was actually you turn a you make a tree on the ground and it gives you vision. And that was it. That was it, it would be like a little tree, but it always looked the same. It looked like a really normal Christmas tree. It was like a perfect Christmas tree. So it's kind of easy to tell if you knew what to look for, that you look for a perfect Christmas tree. It's like completely symmetrical all the way up and down. It's not jagged or anything, so it kind of stood out. You could really find them. Your opponents could cut them down, and then it was gone. So you'd have to worry about that. There was another version where you could put an owl on a tree, and it would give you an, give you an A, we'd be invisible. But you could turn the owl into, like, visible, and then if a unit got close to it, it would shoot a little owl out, and the owl would do damage and stun. That was kind of cool. Dyer's top tower is under so, uh, and that was a pretty big cooldown, so it was, like, a way to give you a stun, but it was a random target. So if you, if you made an owl, like... If you made an owl on the inside of a group of four heroes, it might not hit your target. So it was kind of unreliable and it ended up not being very good. It got scrapped and eventually living armor then became an aura that was global uh, for your heroes during daytime. They gave you armor and regen and then finally it got changed to living armor, which it was more closely to now, but it only stopped physical damage. And then they changed it so it blocked all sources of damage and then finally it was too good. And they had to nerf it so that it had 50 mana and a much longer cooldown at low levels. So living armor has been changed, or Trance has actually been changed a lot over the course of Dota. Um, what's been changed now is that his ultimate, or once you have an Aghanim Scepter, uh, once you get your Aghanim Scepter on Triumph Protector, you can put Eyes in the Force, again, like how you could before. Um, kind of like the Owl thing, except now it gives you a big AoE that gives you vision. And if you ultimate, no matter where you are in the map, if you cast Overgrowth, it will also overgrowth on where your eyes of the forest are, which is really cool. And the, it does damage now. So wherever you overgrowth, it does damage. Um, it did, I believe the last patch, it did like 125 damage per second or something like that. But with the Aghanims now, I think it does 175. So they buff the damage. And they also reduce, heavily reduce the cooldown of the eyes in the forest. Before, the eyes in the forest cooldown with Aghanim Scepter was about 100 seconds. Now they change it to about 25 seconds. So like... Or did I say 20, 100 seconds? I meant one minute. It was about one minute, and they changed it down to 25 seconds. So they about halved it. Um, uh, to, to go off that a little bit, the reason I bought the Ogre Club and the Staff of Wizardry first before the point booster is because the Ogre Club gives me damage and HP, and the Staff of Wizardry is pretty okay because it gives me mana. So um, I thought it was okay. In this case, if I'm playing more of a core role, or at least I feel like I can contribute, it's probably better for me to grab the damage item over the point booster. It's one of the rare cases where that's the case. If you're playing support, your damage doesn't really matter. It's about HP. It's about value. But if I'm playing a core, I was like, I'm going to get an Ogre Club. This is fine. So I'm going to rush the eggs. I'm going to try to get eyes everywhere on the map. And then I'm going to try to contribute at that point. And uh, this isn't really something you can expect when you play Trium. But you can go for this if you want to. If you organize with your allies and you're like, I'm going to play safe farm Trium Protector. I'm going to get a lot of last hits. And I'm going to I'm going to transition very rapidly into getting an Aghanim Scepter, and I'm going to try to do something good with that. Pretty good overgrowth. Basically made their Ravage a uh, big waste. That was good. Wasting their Ravage is not a bad thing. We should have gotten the Tide Kill, but it was a nice heal from Omni Knight, so... I, I thought this fight was over, to be honest. I'm moving towards him, I didn't necessarily want to heal if I didn't need to do it. So I won't. Again, going to go back to farming here. Um, so the problem with Trium Protector and Aghanim Scepter, I, I personally think it's really good and you'll see that later, but the problem is that farming it is not possible in most games, like I was saying before. Like, you never get a safe, safe farm Trium Protector, it just doesn't happen. It's never going to exist. Like. Nobody's going to want to give that to you, and the problem is you can't farm it very well as a support either. I think one way that you maybe could do it is if you get a Quelling Blade and a Stout Shield, and once you get le you gotta get levels for yourself, essentially, and then you just go around farming. Um, that's one way to maybe do it, to get a bit of flash farm, but there isn't really a lot of good ways to increase your farm rate. You can't really get a Mjolnir, you can't get a Maelstrom, you can't get a Midas in the first place. All those items are too expensive for a Treant to get. And by the time you finally finish the eggs, it's going to be like 30 minutes, so getting it a lot earlier is, is really beneficial to the hero, if, if you can, but, you know, it's kind of hard. So, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really sure what the best way to do it is. Um, I'll bring up my point booster now, because at this point I don't really need 
Uh, 10 agility does very little. Uh, it's it's actually not little. I, I think this hero this hero attacks really slowly, so 10 attack speed is, is okay. And the armor can be kind of nice, but it's not really needed. But anyways, going to continue focusing on the eggs. I'm literally just moving around the map. I'm farming in lanes. I'm pretty hard to kill, because I can always go invisible if I need to. And I can still kind of contribute to my team, because I can armor them uh, across the map or... You know, things like that. So, uh, grabbing two levels of Nature's Guys is usually really recommended because it doubles the duration. 15 seconds is a little low. 30 seconds really allows you to do things like walking around and placing wards. So keep in mind that if you're invisible with your first skill, you can cast spells and you can use items, I believe, without revealing yourself. It's kind of like how Ricky functions now. Give him a little bit of armor here. So he looks like he's in a bit of trouble. Just want to make sure he doesn't die here. Middle tower is under attack. Let's kind of win hand this game. So, um, if you do go some, some kind of a farming nature or tree and protector build, maybe, maybe if I was going to do it, I would go like Soul Ring, Quelling Blade, Stout Shield. That would allow you to like AFK jungle the whole game if you really wanted to. Uh, you probably shouldn't be doing that, but if you want to go for this kind of a, a play style, that might be the best way to do it. I, I don't know. So there's my eggs. Uh, I'm gonna, the courier's unfortunately not there, so I'm just going to run back and grab it. Um, pretty important that I get it picked up. Blitz already has, a, has his Aghanim Scepter finished. You can also roam around with Treant in the early game if you want to do that. That might be a good way to get a big gold advantage. Uh, you can do that by getting a boots and going something like Orb of Venom. It's a little harder now because the Leech Seed was slightly nerfed compared to when people did that. But... It's, it's sometimes the right thing. Uh, and sometimes pre-armoring your allies is really good. I know Blitz isn't going to die right there, but he could get some damage block, and then by the time my armor is up, he'll might, he might actually be in trouble again. And there we go. There's my sub ability. 100 mana, and I can put a uh, Eyes in the Force down, and uh, it's 800 radius. So pretty big radius. And now my purpose in life is pretty much just to walk around the map and put Eyes everywhere. Um... I want to put them in key areas where I expect my opponents are going to be, so I want to put them in front of a tower, because if we're pushing and they engage on us, I can ulti there. I want to put them throughout their jungle, because if they go in the jungle, uh, they're likely to over... This guy was bug abusing, by the way. There was a bug. I don't know if it's still in the game or not, but if it is, please don't do it. It's super stupid. You buy a vitality booster on the lone druid bear, and then you transfer it back and forth between your heroes. If you do this... Uh, the bear continuously gets the HP every time you transfer it back to him. That's why the bear had 6200 HP instead of like 27 or whatever it's supposed to have. Oh nice, we do actually kill him. We can still kill the main hero, but his actual bear is going to have a stupid amount of HP the whole game. It actually made the game quite difficult. Again, don't be afraid to punch when you're playing Trium Protector. You hit really hard. So, it's pretty beneficial. You can see the AoE here. It's a little grass line. One way you counter it, by the way, is by getting True Sight. So, if you can see any of these parts, if you have True Sight of any of the green area, they can see it, basically. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So, it gives True Sight. That tree that I put over there is actually spottable by the tower. Um... So we got a little bit of vision there. Uh, they are killing our... Is that our sentry, I think? I think they had a sentry there or something like that. I'm just going to keep putting eyes on. That one is actually a bad idea because if they have a sentry... Um, let me free camera this really quick. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So if they have a sentry, let's look at the vision range. That means they can see this green stuff here. They can also see this little bit here. They can see this patch and they can see this patch. And that gives them a vague estimation about where the trees are, and from there they can figure out where they are and kill them. So that's what they should be doing. They should be killing the trees as much as possible. Anyways, I'm going to continue putting my um, my trees down. Uh, make sure that you put them by neutral camps. It's really important. So yeah, you buy the Vitality vitality Booster, you transfer it back and forth between your, um, your thing, your bear, and then you sell the Vitality Booster 
He's trying to pretend like he doesn't know. He, the guy, the guy's, the guy knows exactly what he's doing. He's trying to abuse it to go, to raise his MMR. The benefit is that the guy had no fucking clue how to micro correctly, so he just played really bad all game. It was really nice. It made it a lot harder though when the bear has twice as much HP. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So just put a couple uh, eyes in the forest everywhere. First of all, I mean, look at all the vision it gives us. That's the cool part. Um, it also allows you to see when your opponents are farming neutral camps. You can pretty much always be ready to fight that. I can also ulti right here and it hit sniper. Isn't that cool? I think that's really awesome. I seem to remember my first ulti was real bad. Just wanted to get a bunch of eyes down, essentially. See, look at that. I hit five heroes. Look at the damage. Look at that damage. Wasn't that insane? That was, like, actually insane how much damage I just did. Uh, I just hit level 2, so it didn't do 4 seconds, or I think it does, yeah, it does 3 chunks of 175. So that is actually uh, just under 600 damage. That's 525 damage. It's basically like I Finger of Death 3 heroes, more or less, pretty close. Finger of Death is 600, I believe. Is it, wait, or is it 725 now? I can't remember. Finger of Death is like 600, I think. So it's all like I almost Finger of Death 3, like 4, 5, 5 heroes. And they all got entangled for three seconds. Like, that was huge amounts of damage that I just outputted with the eggs. Um, I also bought a Sage's Mask, by the way, because I wanted to up my mana regen a little bit. I maybe should have bought that before, like I said, before I bought Aghanim's components. I think I probably should have. Because um, I can always disassemble later and make something else. Or I can make, like, Tranquil Boots. That would have been good, uh, probably. Again, I'm putting up more eyes. I want to just completely, completely cover their jungle. Because that allows us to farm their jungle while we're also pressuring on the map. And at this point, I'm going to go back and heal. Because my mana is so low that there's no point for me to be out of the map anymore. So, I'm expecting to be in fights. So, I think I built an urn here. Which I think was an okay choice. Maybe, you know, I think would have been better rather than an urn. Maybe like, um, well, you know, I think urn is good. You should always have one urn every game. But I think a medallion would have been really good as well. Because um, I'm going to be saving people by casting armor on them. If I can cast armor and I can also... Because they changed urn, uh, you can use it to increase the armor of your allies. If I also increased the armor of my allies while I casted the damage block on them, I think that could be really useful. And here I was a little sad that I didn't have a better tree. Unfortunately, I didn't have a tree anywhere that they were standing, so me ulting them was not going to be possible. Again, continue to uh, give him armor whenever you can, if you're across the map. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. If I'm passing by a tower, might as well pull one down. It's a pretty low cooldown, so it should be up by the time I get back. Um, and especially if they ever end up pushing the mid tower, I'm not set up to defend against that. This does not look good. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I'm gonna send Viz for a little bit. Now I don't wanna, I think that one was even too close. I think they're gonna be able to see some of this. It also kind of reveals that that I'm here. Make sure that you sometimes place the weird trees. Um, if somebody, I mean, if somebody has a quelling blade, which is what they should be using to detree this stuff, they should be able to find the correct one. Anyways, like they should be able to see some of this. I'm, I'm so sure that they do. Got three heroes. I did a little bit of damage, but it wasn't that great. Um, I mostly forced them to to stop initiating, which is okay. One of the really nice things about this is that. And I want to put another tree far far in. This is pretty much where they're always going to be. 
I think at this point I need to go heal. And I had to grab more mana regen as well, because I'm casting one of those eyes for 100 mana every, like, 25 seconds. And I want to do that until the game ends. So I want the whole map to be covered, essentially. By the way, you might be wondering why I'm getting all my money, because at this point I'm kind of getting cash uh, at a decent rate, despite not really getting any more last hits. What's happening is that because I have eyes covering a lot of neutral camps in their jungle, every time I ultimate, those spots also get the overgrowth casted on them. That means I'm doing a couple hundred points of damage to that every single time. I have like... There's like nothing I can do to stop that. At this point, I might as well just TP home. So yeah, the, the idea is to get a lot of the trees all over jungle camps. I think I should have spent a bit more time to uh, tree up my jungle as well. Um, just because it increases your farm rate by so much. I did that later, but I think it was a bit a bit too late before I really focused on that. I don't quite remember. I should take another... I don't know I didn't take a TP scroll while leaving my base. I should have. Um, I got a Void Stone again because I want to increase my mana regen. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to buy next, and I think I... I At this point, I was like, I'm pretty sure that I want to get a utility item because right now I feel a little bit like I'm not contributing to fights well enough. So I think I bought a Refresher right away. Uh, refresher is a really good item um, if you have a big teamfight ultimate. It felt like slightly a waste to me because uh, your ultimate is such a low cooldown. It's 70 seconds. Well, that bear just doesn't die. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Could be putting an eye down here. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. I kind of wanted to put aggressive eye down here. Like this one's gonna be really obvious. They can see this. But if they fight, we're also going to have a perfect vantage point. Like, look at the HP on this thing. That was not the right time to yule. If that guy actually built a Radiance or something, we would have had such a hard time. Because he actually could have just stood the bear against us, and we wouldn't have been able to kill it very easily. We didn't have very many physical right clickers. Like, if we had a PA or something, you just buy a Desolator and maybe like a Medallion, and that thing would die pretty quick. But definitely became a little scary this game. Gonna continue putting eyes everywhere. Right side, we wasted Ravage again. That was good. And we killed the Lone Druid. That was a micro problem right there. So using Overgrowth for things like this is good. If we can fight them outside of our base, they run into the, the Grove, as we'll call it, I guess. That's a good force stuff. This part gets a little hard. I should have armored uh, Axe instead. I didn't realize he was so low, though. <laughs> HP's a little bit low. I'm sorry, my mana's a little low. And that'll be my Perseverance. Slightly more mana regen. I'm not quite sure why I ultied here. I think that one was a big waste. Dyer's top tower is 
Let's go back 10 seconds. Let's see how much gold I got from that, by the way. Look. Wait, wait. Alright. Ring of Health. I have 600 gold. I'm about to ulti. 600 gold. I actually just got 500 gold just now from ulting. 500 gold. That was from 1, 2, 3, 4 camps. 4 camps and I got 500 gold. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it might be because one of the creeps got weakened from a previous ultimate. But this is why the, the eggs on Treant is really good. It's not just because it's pretty darn good against heroes. It's also because it's really good for getting yourself farm and getting yourself vision. Now, I, I haven't played this against a team that is good at killing the trees. But I have a feeling that we'll maybe see somebody learn how to abuse this in a good way. And I'm sure there's a good way that you can do it. I, I'm just not really sure yet. Maybe people will play mid-tree or something and see how fast they can get an axe. Then they'll go around the map just doing really annoying things. I, I'm not entirely sure, but... I really should have gotten a medallion, that's for sure. Especially because it's really good against the, the bear. If we can reduce the bear's armor by 7, he'll take a lot more damage. So definitely should have gotten a medallion in this game. And again, put another tree in the jungle if I can. They actually did kill some, one of my trees over here. Oh, wait, no, it's right there. I just can't see it anymore. That's weird. Well, I messed up the replay, guys. Can't see any of the trees on the ground anymore. I messed it up. When I went back 10 seconds, it, it ruined everything. That's too bad. You'll just have to look at the map at least, unfortunately. I'm really sad that I, I messed that up, actually. That sucks. Going back to get more mana either way. Man, I'm actually so so disappointed that I messed that up. Uh, I don't think going ahead 10 seconds is going to fix anything. I, I am like so upset with this that I almost want to reload the replay and just come back to this moment. I, I think I'm going to if I can because I, that is like so important to show value. I think, oh, one second, let me, let me, 28.56 in game and it is, oh, it's the same thing. Alright, let's close this. Oh god, close your eyes. Don't look. Um, hmm. this is not working either. I I really want this to work, to be honest. So I think I might even. Is that one working? See, it's it's only gonna render them if it gets casted. All right, close your eyes. Close your eyes if you don't want to be spoiled. So that means I have to like fast forward. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fast forward to the point where I know that I don't have the eggs yet. And then, where's my hero? Oh, there I am. Dyer's top tower is under and then we're just gonna Dyer's eight times. Ah, uh, this is way too early. Top tower Let's speed forward like another five minutes. Alright, now we eight times for ten minutes. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this so your guys' eyes don't go insane. Look at that beautiful green. Let's look what the eggs does, it's so good. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. All these creeps are gonna take damage on ILT. Dyer's middle tower. Dyer's Dyer's top tower is under Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower. Dyer's top tower. Dyer's top tower. Dyer's top tower. Alright. We went top. Dyer's middle tower. Yeah. Alright, 
so we have to go all the way up until I get the perseverance and the almost refresher, and that's where then we're back on track. Okay, we made it. We're back to where we were. Sorry about that. Um, I, I just think that it's really important to be able to see where the AoEs are because it, it really gives you an impact of, of how strong the Agonims is. And again, it's not just because of the active, it's because of how fast you can farm. It's stupidly fast. Every time you ulti, it's like you're playing Nature's Prophet and you Wrath of Nature, except his ultimate is better than Wrath of Nature because it also disables. And this is the part where I was like, alright, I need to get my farming back up. And the way to do that is to sit around by my jungle camps and do and to... Um, Owl them up, so to speak. And I should have done this a little earlier, but if you're team fighting and you're always pushing in their base, you generally want to spend more time st sticking around there. And this is, this is an example of this. I'm, I'm sitting like far away from my whole team and I wanted to sit back and, and put eyes down, but I shouldn't be doing that. I should be coming to fights. So me, me going over there is a little iffy. Here's another place that you can do it. People are very likely to ancient. They're very likely to stand there as you're preparing to rush on. So really good place to have vision. I put a lot of eyes in this general area as well, over by this common warding spot, but a lot of the times they dewarded it. Um, and that's something you have to be aware of as well. Try not to put the eyes where people are likely to put their centuries. This tree is obviously one of the best places to put an eye, but it's very easy to deward as well. So. Um, you can't put eyes in the high ground unless you blink up there, by the way. So Blink Dagger is really, really good on Triant as well. And while I was sitting here, I thought, you know, rather than... I mean, we already see the left, so I'm going to put an eye over to the right. And now look at our vision. Like, everything around the Roche Pit is really well, really visible. So if they go up there trying to initiate, I can ultimate. Unfortunately, we accidentally denied the Aegis. <laughs> that was really shitty. Maxing out Leech Seed now, because I think three levels of the Eyes and the Forces is, is pretty adequate. They keep killing some of the Eyes over here, so... Maybe if you really wanted to farm fast a tree, you could go like Treads, Quelling, Stout Shield or something. Maybe that would be good. Sounds kind of good to me. This is pretty dangerous to me to farm like this. It's very close to their base and most of them are missing. And then, yeah, finally getting spotted. Wasn't paying good enough attention when I was playing the game though. I didn't have a TP, otherwise I would have juke in there and tried to TP out. And I probably would have made it. But I'm I'm pretty dead. On the bright side, I'm sure I got like 500 gold as I ultied, so. Had that going for me. And then I looked at the camps, and I'm like, oh, these are all dead. That's weird. I should definitely have a lot more in the jungle, though. In my jungle. I could be getting more gold. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that. You're only getting that gold if those jungle camps are, are there, by the way. So if you have a really he farm-heavy team, I don't think this build is going to work out where you actually populate your neutral camps and farm them. But if you don't have that much carry potential on your team where you spend all of your time pushing like we did this game, then I think it's going to be okay to do that. Does he have Radiance or something? No, he doesn't. I mean, look at that. The bear's actually just unkillable. It's so stupid. Any piece of armor he gets as well is just really efficient. He has such a stupid amount of HP. So I respawn walking back.
should definitely cast on um, some of the neutral camps on the way out. I don't think he actually should have suicided there. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Maybe he should have been there for the fight. If I would have ran straight, I would have gotten there in time. Um, but I, I wanted to push out the bot lane a little bit, and I wanted to get the refresher. I didn't actually think a fight was going to happen, to be honest. Which is part of the reason that I wasn't there. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower it's considering ulting here. There we go. Did they get the sniper as well? Oh, that's right, he got away. I was so sad about that. I was like, I used Refresher for that, and it was unnecessary. Um, the problem with Refresher with this build is that your ulti is, ulti is such a low cooldown that it feels like a waste to get a Refresher Orb. I wasn't sure if I should not get it or not. Um, I still felt like it was useful. It also gave me plus 40 damage, and it gave me some attacks. It gave me a lot of mana regen, so in a lot of ways it was good, I think. Um... I'm just not entirely sold if uh, if it's the right build. It's a lot of gold for kind of small payoff, is how it feels. It's okay. That went alright. It's a bloodstone and a blade mill. It's pretty good. Let's do chop more often. The HP is good. I think in the future I would, yeah, I don't think an urn is very good on Trion. It's like, it's not very often that you're in the fights, so I feel like I, I almost got no urn charges this game. I don't really feel like we we're going to be able to take the tower, so I TP'd back. Um, Blitz thought this was wrong at the time. I messed up my ulti there. I used it way too late. That was a big mistake. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I zoned out really hard. So we're having a lot of trouble going high ground, essentially. What we basically need to do to compensate is 
get more items or get picks outside of the base. I could ulti this, for example. That was an Aghanim's um, gyrocopter ulti. Getting those kills are really important because they allow us to go high ground, but it's really hard to go high ground against their team because they have Bloodseeker who can just do his big AoE that does pure damage. They have a lone Druid Bear that actually can't die, so he can take damage and basically prevent us from just wailing on the tower. You can pull the creep waves away. The bear abuse is really annoying. Um, the Omni Knight is going to help keep people alive if they get jumped on. The Tide Hunter Ravage makes things really difficult. There's just like a lot of things that, that make things make things pretty hard here. Oh, we got a courier. That's nice. Ooh, it had a, had a 5,500 gold item. That's pretty good. Um, I put another tree on one of our jungle camps, but again, I should have done this earlier. I should have had trees on every single jungle camp quite early, and also on the Ancients as well, because the Black Dragons, the smaller ones, can die. Uh, at this point, I also bought a Blink Dagger. I think I should have got a Blink way before I started the Refresher. Just because uh, the my ability to jump in and overgrowth naturally is really important. I put it on the small camp instead of the large camp because I knew that every time I ulti, it'll kill the whole small the whole small camp. Whereas the large camp is not as not as uh, likely. I didn't know if he was gonna want that or not. So. They did use Ravager, so we weren't too concerned. Did so much. so hard to push. <laughs> I'd use my refresher as well there, because we needed an overgrowth for that fight. I got farm with it. But I didn't get um didn't get the damage on the heroes, but that's okay. Like just using it for damage is pretty good. It's a pretty weird fight. Finally won the fight. <laughs> it's pretty close. You have to do a lot, of, a lot of weaving in and out when there's that many survival heroes. Because we're kind of, actually both lineups are kind of similar. It's like lots of tanky heroes with a lot of heals and things. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. I want to put as many eyes down as I could. Just makes me more likely to keep them up if, if, uh, if they get killed. But taking one Rax is a big advantage, finally. So we, we can push in a little bit easier. See how many items I got, though? I don't I don't know what my GPM was. My net worth was huge. Look at that shit. I actually had the 
what when is the second time that or like once when's, when's the time that you like saw a tree and protector have the highest net worth in the game it was so weird my gold made is 411 like i didn't even have to get a midas i actually just played i got an agonims and then i played regular and i got a, i mean i didn't i didn't buy wards and stuff but i had like a stupid amount of farm that's what makes this build pretty cool Fortunately, I ran out of mana here to double ulti. Actually, this is quite good against Omni, actually, because you can break the, uh, the Guardian Angel. And that's pretty much the end. So yeah, um, I, I don't know if this is really viable. It feels viable, kind of, because my farm rate, while we were busy pushing, was so high just because I was ultimating. Because every time I'd ulti, I get like 500 gold. So I, I kind of feel like it's viable in some way. I'm just not really sure how, and I don't know if it's good against good people. Because if you get a gem and you get a quelling blade, or if you're playing like a timber saw up against a timber saw or something with a gem, they're gonna kill all of your trees. You're not gonna have anything. You actually won't get any farm at all. So there's a really good way to counter it. But in pubs, it's really effective, because all you have to do is slowly farm the first 4,000 gold, and once you have it, you're set for the rest of the game. You can contribute a lot more than your hero could before, and it also nets you farm as well. And there's not a lot of heroes like that, so I, I feel like the buffs are pretty good. They put them in a pretty good place. The cooldown is low enough. You're kind of mana-intensive, but it's worth it uh, if you get a lot of eyes up. So um, That's Stream Protector. Uh, it's not really how you should be playing him, but it's maybe the way that you can play him now. I'm, I'm not, nobody really plays him competitively, but maybe it's possible now. I'm not sure. I don't think it's worth it to save farm him, though, because it doesn't scale well enough to be really, really amazing, but maybe it's something that you guys might see in the future. I'm not sure. But in pubs, at least, you can do this, and I think it, I thought it was really fun, and I really wanted you to see all the tree stuff, so I'm glad that you are patient for that if you're still here. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm going to be kicking butt this week. Uh, my guides in game finally got fixed. Thanks to, I think his name is Tortellini, Tortadellini, I think, I don't know how to pronounce it, but thanks to him, uh, he helped me fix the guide stuff in game, so uh, I'm going to start updating my guides again in game, and I'll probably start making some new ones as well, so if you guys are looking out for those, uh, you can be looking for mine, I guess. I'll probably cover a lot of the other new heroes that I've been playing in the last year, since I made those guides, uh, it's probably like, probably make like a Jakiro one, and I think I have an Ogre Magi one already, but I'll probably make a Jakiro and uh, maybe a less track, maybe update the less track if I have one. I can't remember. Um, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you later. I'm going to work really hard this week, and I hope you guys like the content. Bye.